All right. Well, um, I want to thank you again for um, joining today to hear about the eight easy strategies for building language learning opportunities in daily routines. Um, the objectives for today, sorry, um, we're just we're going to talk about what is PC Talk and how PC Talk strategies support child language and communication development. Um, why building language learning opportunities in everyday activities is important and how you can use these eight PC Talk strategies um, and the importance of daily routines in providing language learning opportunities for young children. Um, the last part for like in terms of building the importance of building daily routines, it's listed as like the last objective, but that'll be peppered throughout the presentation. Um, that's really kind of the key to, of, of PC Talk is using these strategies in um, everyday activities. Some notes about this presentation before I get started. Um, the PC Talk intervention um, and the strategies have been designed to be used with infants, toddlers, and preschoolers. That's our research is focused on those, you know, uh, three age ranges. If you have older children or you work with older children, um, you may not find this presentation as relevant because, you know, you may not be focusing on language or communication development um, with, with older children. Um, however, I would say as a parent of a two-year-old and a nine-year-old, um, I use the strategies with both my kiddos. Obviously, two-year-old, I'm using it, you know, for... Um, actually, you know, working on language and communication development, but my nine-year-old I'm using to, you know, um, create positive, positive interactions and bond with her. Um, I use the term caregiver throughout the presentation instead of parent, um, just to be inclusive of all kinds of caregivers of children, whether it be biological or foster parents, grandparents, teachers, babysitters, um, and so on. Um, you, might, you might also hear me talk about building caregiver capacity in this uh, presentation. And that's just simply a shorthand for developing and strengthening skills and abilities and resources to support child language and communication development. Um, although the PC Talk intervention was not designed or intended to focus on reducing challenging behavior, we know that when children can better communicate their needs, they are less likely to engage in challenging behavior. Um, you know, behavior is communication. So by using these strategies to promote child language development, children will learn more socially acceptable ways to communicate their needs. So, you know, for instance, um, you know, my toddler uh, likes to um, hit or push if someone's, you know, in his, in his, you know, bubble in his area. Um, and he's learning how to say, you know, um, to his sister, <laughs> move Ada um, to, you know, that's a more socially acceptable way to get her to move out of his bubble. So, um, so again, while we're not specifically focusing on, you know, challenging behaviors um, by promoting communication, you can help um, reduce or avoid some of those challenges. Um, sorry, I'm like, I've lost my, uh, I lost my, the way my PowerPoint looks and it's messing me up a little bit. Give me just a second here. Okay. So um, what is PC Talk? PC Talk stands for Promoting Communication Tools for Advancing Language in Kids. Now you know why we call it PC Talk. Um, it's eight naturalistic strategies for promoting communication and language. These strategies have been designed to use across daily activities and routines. Um, when we say naturalistic, we mean that, you know, this is just something that kind of naturally is can be embedded into day-to-day -day things that you're doing. It's not some additional um, device or something extra that you're adding that isn't, wouldn't typically be part of the interaction. Um, strategies, as I mentioned before, can be used with infants, toddlers, and preschoolers. Um, research that we've done with PC Talk um, has focused on children with typical development, as well as children with disabilities or delays, um, children that are dual language learners. Um, we have materials, our materials are limited to English and Spanish, but the intervention strategies can be used um, in any language. Um, again, the kind of one of the key elements of PC Talk is it's been designed to 
the strategies are designed to use um, to be used across daily activities and routines. Um, and then the other part of the um, intervention, so you have the eight strategies, but then we have the tools and resources to support the caregiver strategy use of those um, of those strategies. So um, that's kind of the, I think the really um, key part of, of PC Talk and the way that um, we, through the tools and resources, um, really help uh, providers or caregivers, you know, use these strategies. Um, who uses PC Talk? It's really any caregiver who interacts with young children. That can be parents, teachers, caregivers. Um, it can be used, you know, we've, we've done research with um, home visitors using, you know, they're learning the intervention so that then they can teach the parents that they support how to use these strategies. Um, we've done research in early childhood centers, um, you know, early Head Start, Educare, um, where we're working with coaches that are teaching um, teachers how to use this intervention in their classrooms. Before I get into the strategies, I'm going to briefly talk about the background and some of the research that has led to the development, like why this is important in, in the development of the strategies. So decades of child development research has shown that children's earliest language learning opportunity or learning, <laughs> earliest language learning environments have an impact on short and long-term child communication outcomes. When children have a variety of opportunities to engage in positive and nurturing language learning interactions with adults, they're more likely to develop language, early literacy, and social skills needed for success later in school and beyond. Specifically, early research conducted um, in the 80s at Juniper Gardens Children's Project, which is where I work, um, found that when parents talked and interacted more often, with their children, the children were more likely to see higher rates of growth in language and communication. Um, specifically, when the adults talked about items or activities that the children showed an interest in, asked open-ended questions like, you know, who, what, when, where, and why, um, imitated what the children were attempting to communicate and expanded on those, expanded on those like utterances, um, as well as when the parents use fewer um, prohibitions, like, you know, no, stop it, or negative comments. So when the parents were doing all that, we found that the children were most likely to develop their language and vocabulary. So that research informed and led to the development of the eight strategies that I will be talking about today. Children's vocabulary at age three and their growth in early vocabulary are strong predictors of later school success. So research tells us that when children lack those early education or early language experiences, they are likely to have lower language growth trajectories, which can then set in motion delays in vocabulary growth, um, school achievement, reading, and social emotional development. Um, for instance, many children who have not developed some basic literacy skills by the time they enter school um, are three to four uh, times more likely to drop out in later years. So, um, so this work is really important in terms of, you know, promoting uh, child language communication and development, because um, we can see that, you know, this early work is building a foundation for the, the children to have, you know, these better outcomes um, in the in the long run. And then, you know, when they don't have those things in place, when they don't have vocabulary, they don't have the communication in place, then they don't have basic literacy skills. And then that, you know, impacts them down the road. So considering all that, why should you be interested in learning about the PC Talk strategies? Um, the PC Talk strategies and tools were developed to build caregiver capacity, right? To increase language experiences for infants and toddlers and preschoolers. We have over 20 years of research with the PC Talk intervention in a variety of settings. So childcare, home visiting, and early intervention programs, like I mentioned earlier. Um, that has demonstrated that PC Talk strategies are effective in improving child communication outcomes. So um, what we see time and time again is when um, caregivers use the strategies, um, their child's language improves, right? And for us, when we're looking at child language, we're looking at gestures, um, vocalizations, um, words, and then multi-words. Those are kind of the four um, elements of, of communication that we're looking at. So when parents use those strategies, child communication increases. Um, and then 
why, like, why is this working or, or what is the kind of the, you know, secret element to this? I think it really is that we understand the power of day-to-day -day, um, caregiver, child, adult, inter or caregiver, child interactions and the importance of using those like strategies, the eight strategies that we'll learn about today um, consistently and over time. So when you use them consistently and over time, you provide many rich and varied opportunities for um, the children to experience and practice language and communication. The other part of PC Talk um, that I think stands out for other interventions. Yeah. Did someone ask, I heard something. Okay. Um, so the other part of PC Talk. Um, so the other part of PC Talk. I'm sorry, I'm hearing feedback. But the, um, the other part of PC Talk that's important is with any intervention, you can have the best intervention out there that you're like, this intervention is effective. We know it. And we do know that with PC Talk, right? Like I said, we know that when parents, caregivers use the strategies, child language improves or child communication improves. Um, but you can have the best intervention out there. Um, but if you're not using it consistently, if you're not using it the way that it was designed to be implemented, um, we call that implementation fidelity. When that's not happening, you're not going to achieve those outcomes, right? You're not going to get the results that you want. And so um, I think with PC Talk, we have effective tools and strategies for making that happen. Um, and I will get into the, the, the tools um, later in terms of like how the, you know, how we have tools available to support caregiver use. But um, again, I think that's the beauty of PC Talk is that like we understand the importance of the experiences, the power of everyday languages, how to take this intervention and how to implement it throughout the day. And then um, we have the tools and resources available to help people use the strategies consistently. So let's talk about these strategies. There are eight strategies. They're all designed, again, you'll hear me say this a lot, designed to be used throughout the typical, um, throughout typical daily routines at home. Um, you can see the eight here, environmental arrangement, follow child's lead, comment and label, imitate and expand, ask open-ended questions, fill in the blank, um, positive attention and praise and providing choices. Um, these strategies can be used individually or a few at a time. Um, they can be used, you know, like within like two sentences, you've used a few strategies or, or one utterance uh, or two utterances, you know. Um, You've probably heard of these, like I said, and you know, like, oh yeah, well, I use positive attention and praise. Um, what we find that, you know, these strategies aren't rocket science. They they are things that most people are familiar with. Um, we find that like, well, a lot of us will say, yeah, sure, I do this with my kiddo or I do this with um, you know, my families that I work with. Um, it's that the level at which those strategies are really being used throughout the day ends up being very low for many infants and toddlers and young children, um, both in childcare settings and at home. And so coming back to like the importance of daily routines, it's using these strategies throughout the day across many different routines. Um, that consistency is really where we see the difference um, with PC Talk and how um, how that really kind of helps um the consistency in using it regularly is really the, the secret to, you know, getting the outcomes that you want. Um, I will be going through these strategies fairly quickly just because of the amount of time that we have. Um, for each strategy, I will briefly describe it and then I will show you a video example of it. Um, but at the end of the presentation, I'll go over our, um, I'll show you our website and then um, show you some tools that you can access. And that will really kind of allow you to do a deeper dive into some of the strategies. Um, so if you have any questions um, and you're like, okay, you know, I'm still not clear on this. I think the tools that we have on the website will um, help you be more clear about that, but certainly ask me any questions that you have um, at the end of the presentation. So the first strategy that I'd like to talk about is arranging the environment. And um, we often suggest starting with arranging the environment because you're, you know, um, you want an environment that's conducive to language interactions. And when I say environment, I mean um, the physical and the social environment. So you're set, you're arranging the environment to provide opportunities to experience and practice 
the children to offer, uh, have them uh, have opportunities to um, practice talking and communicating. The social environment is, is really thinking about like considering the interactions and routines that take place throughout the day and how you're thinking about those routines and, and, and allowing opportunities for um, communication in those routines. But for the physical space, um, you know, you can see pictures here of, of little book areas, like you create a cozy book area to promote interaction and early literacy, um, you know, having toys available, um, child-friendly toys and materials available where children can access those materials independently, like toy bins and shelves that, you know, children can see, talk about and play with, um, Another strategy of arranging the environment is maybe having toys and books that are within view, but aren't quite accessible because then you're giving, you know, the child the opportunity, they can see it, um, but they're, you know, asking, hey, you know, like my son will ask for bubbles because he can see them, um, but cannot reach them. Um, one of the things too, just specific with a slide, because we have, um, that I want to mention, we have pictures of like books and stuff. Um, I think that, you know, sometimes specifically with reading and with, with um, infants, you think of early literacy, you think of reading, um, a lot of caregivers, or I shouldn't say a lot, but I've seen plenty of caregivers who um, think of reading, like reading, like I need to go through this book and, you know, and why would I read with um, a baby? Because, you know, there's nothing to do, like they can't go through the book. Um, I think of reading, I actually like to call it looking at books instead of reading because it's more of, you know, like play. Um, you're, you know, might open it to whatever page the child wants to look at, and then you're going to talk about those things and they can turn it however they want to. Um, maybe they just, you know, a um, seven month old might just want to hold that board book and, you know, put it in their mouth or, um, and, and that's, you know, still like you're having opportunities to um, associate good things with books. So, um, so anyway, this is a, a way to like, think of arranging your environment where you can put toys and different things. Again, you're trying to build opportunities to, to promote communication where the child can, um, you know, uh, find things and, and you can talk about them. The other aspect of it, the social part of arranging the environment is designing schedules and routines to promote communication. So, um, you want to arrange the environment so that you can, you know, use the PC talk strategies consistently across the day. Activities that we do around the same time in similar ways on a frequent basis provide a sense of security and predictability. And that is essential for creating a rich learning environment with um, engaging back and forth interactions, right? When kiddos feel secure and they can predict things, then they can, that frees them up to focus on other things, um, like what they're interested in and they're not, you know, what's ne wondering about what's next. Um, routines at home might include, you know, familiar activities such as play, um, you know, looking at books, meals, diapering, going outside. Um, here we see a picture schedule. Um, and then this is another picture of just a, a kiddo in a daily routine of, um, you know, oh goodness, of putting books away or putting silverware away. Um, one thing I want to talk about with with routines and predictability, um, you know, I know like we have a, a like we have a book area where um, my son can go and he, you know, these are where his books are. Um, he has a routine that he knows that, um, you know, roughly there's dinner and then there's bath and then um, looking at books and then, you know, bedtime, but it doesn't have to be rigid. You know, obviously sometimes our schedule doesn't work out and we might, um, you know, there might be playtime after or before bed. Um, but, but if there is a predictability and so that he knows, you know, um, like after bath, or, uh, that, you know, we can say, oh, okay, now it's time to go look at books and he can walk to his book area and sit down and pick out books that he wants to talk to, to look at with us. Um, so that predictability helps, um, with him kind of having like a, a sense of knowing what to expect and, and then being more open to like, we're not dealing with the, um, you know, like sudden change of, I wanted to play, but, you know, he knows that this is like book time. So we're more likely to get cooperation from him. And then that means that we can focus on other things like um, promoting his communication. The <clears throat> next strategy that I'd like to talk about, um, I, I feel like I'm, I, I 
talk pretty fast and I'm going through these. I just want to take a second um, to just check in to see, did anyone have any questions about so far, like what I've talked about with um, the background about why this is important and kind of um, leading into some of the strategies? I guess I could look at the chat. Okay. Um, so we talked about arranging the environment and the, another PC talk strategy is following, uh, following a child's lead. And this is really noticing and talking about the child's interests, activity and materials, or using the child's interests to provide opportunities for communication. So, um, you know, when our communication focuses on the child's current interest, um, the child's more likely to continue um, to attend and be engaged in that interaction activity. So you see this picture, right? This little girl is thrilled about that barn. Um, she's really excited. And so following her lead would be like talking about whatever is going on with that barn that's like slightly uh, out, you know, been cropped out of the picture apparently. Um, so, you know, what is she pointing out? Like talking about that, like that's her level of interest. Um, if the uh, caregiver behind her had, you know, redirected her attention to the book that she's holding, that would not be an example of following her lead. And and it might take significant effort to redirect her to that book. And you're losing out on opportunities to, um, you know, engage with the child in a positive way and and. Um, promote their com communication by some of these other strategies that we'll talk about if you were redirecting the child to that book. So following your lead is like, hey, she's interested in this barn. I'm going to really focus on that. Um, I think that for babies specifically, I see this a lot. <clears throat> you know, um, one of the strat strategies I'll talk about later is commenting and labeling. But um, I think that with babies, young babies, you know, three months old, four month old, they're just, you know, kind of there. Um, and I think sometimes uh, people, caregivers might not know how to interact because, you know, there's, you can't give a four month old necessarily a, you know, a toy to hold on to. Or, um, and so uh, following a child's lead at that age would be just paying attention to what the child is looking at. Um, you know, if they're looking up at a light, then noticing that. Um, I see a lot of times, you know, with caregivers that they're, um, a baby's looking off at, at something, which, you know, at that age is a is a positive cue that the child is interested in, in whatever it is that they're looking at. And then um, in an attempt to try to engage with the child in a, in a you know, honest, like, I want to play with my baby. I want to interact with her or him, um, you know, they might take like a rattle or something and they're like, oh, look at this, look at this. And then that is taking time away from the baby to have to like shift their focus and figure out like whatever this other thing is the caregiver is doing. And that's like, you're missing out on an opportunity there um, as they're shifting their focus. They're, that's taking energy away from them as they're having to shift the focus to this other thing. Whereas if they talked about the light um, or whatever the child was looking at, the baby in this instance, um, that would be following their lead. Um, and that would be, you know, um, like a really like great thing in terms of, you know, helping that baby continue to like focus on whatever it is they're interested in. They're, they're learning in that moment. Um, the other thing with like, paying attention to what children are interested in, following their lead that, you know, when children can direct the activities um, and like are, they're, they're done in a way that they prefer, they're more likely to stay engaged. Like they're happier. And when they're engaged, then they're benefiting from the language experiences in that activity. Um, you know, I think trying to think of other examples for following lead would be in this, I'm coming back to this picture where the child's like looking at the barn, that's really clear, but maybe it's, you know, you're going outside and you are asking the child, well, what are we going to do outside? Where will we go? Like, these are examples of following a child's lead or having them pick out a preferred pair of socks or getting them to um, say which shoe to put on first, right? These are all ways that like the child is interested in this activity of going outside and you're doing all these other things that are related to that, but it's still following their interest and connecting that to outside. So this is like a foundational 
um, strategy. And I'm going to come back to it a lot, but really like most of the other strategies that we talk about when you're doing those strategies, you are um, automatically following the child's lead as well. So I'll show you a, a video um, or an example. Um, the teacher, so this is a, you know, in a classroom, um, the teachers, she's with a group of children, you'll notice that um, the teacher is letting the children direct the conversation. It's, um, and so they're super excited because they can kind of like figure out they're, they're likely, um, they're, you know, directing what's being said and they're super engaged and excited. Um, just a note that you'll hear teachers um, and the children, some of them will speak English, some of them will speak Spanish, but even if you don't understand the Spanish words being said, I think you can still get the gist of um, how these teachers are following the children's lead. Wait, wait, I Okay, so um, we see, you know, here, uh, multiple conversations taking place, um, one in English, one in Spanish. Um, the English teacher, she's following a child who wants to talk about a house, and then she wants to talk about her mama making tortillas. Um, then they start pretending that they're making tortillas with a Play-Doh. I think someone was talking about their dog. Um, you know, a lot of activities and topics happening, and the children were really leading it. Um, and it's all done, you know, in a very natural context. Um, and so this is a pretty good, great example of um, following their lead and seeing how she's doing that and she's keeping them engaged in that activity. And then that's allowing her to continue to use strategies that are um, helping promote their communication. The next strategy that I'd like to talk about is commenting and labeling. And um, I mentioned this earlier when we were I was talking about infants and following lead, or following a child's lead, but commenting and labeling um, involves naming, labeling, and describing the child's um, actions or even the adult's actions, the activities, toys, materials. Um, so the children can hear, um, talk about the actions that are happening. They can hear these labels um, and that helps build vocabulary. Um, when we comment and label based on what the child is interested or engaged in, they're more likely to remember and learn the words that we're using. So, you know, coming back to like that previous picture of the of the little girl that was super excited about the barn, um, you know, if her the caregiver behind her had talked about the book, um, again, like she's like, you know, I can imagine she'd be like, what, what is this book nonsense? I'm here for the barn. 
And so, you know, she would be like way more interested and engaged and likely to remember words that are being used, tractor, horse, different things that she's like engaged with in that moment, instead of look at this, whatever picture on the book. Um, I think that um, commenting and labeling is something that is, um, it's just a really great uh, a strategy to use with infants. Um, you know, a lot of the other strategies we'll talk about will just, will, I don't want to say require, but there will be ideally some aspect where the child responds, right? Like an open-ended question, ideally the child will answer the question. Um, with commenting and labeling, there's no, you know, um, ex expectation for the child to respond. You're just describing what's going on. And so this is a great, great, great strategy to use with infants. And, and again, coming back to that example of the infant staring and maybe they're looking at a light and the caregiver jingles the rattle or keys um, because that's an easy, like that's a physical activity. Oh, I can shake this rattle. That's, you know, that's what you do with babies, right? Um, but the baby was, you know, positively like, you know, uh, cueing that they were interested in something else. Um, by commenting and labeling, oh, are you, you know, you're looking at the, the light is up there. The light is bright. Um, those are ways to engage with a baby um, that is not going to necessarily respond, um, at, you know, at three months with even really like babbling or anything like that. Um, so I'm going to show you a video example of this. Um, you're going to notice in this video that the parent is changing her child's diaper and she's talking about different body parts. And as they engage in the activity together, the parent comments and labels and the child is really focused on what her mom, um, focused on her mom and like what she's saying. So I think again, she's, you know, taking this routine, totally typical routine of diaper changing that happens several times a day. And, um, and then she's using it as a way to, um, build vocabulary for the child and then also keep the child engaged um so let's see good morning hi sweetie look at your toes and your tummy can i kiss your tummy can i kiss your tummy you like it when mommy kisses your tummy okay so um so this is this is like, seems very natural, right? For the mom to do this. This isn't a, oh, I need to go get the PC talk, um, you know, device to be able to work on communication with my child during this interaction, right? It's something that she's going to be doing all the time, uh, throughout the day. <laughs> and, um, and it's, you know, she does this consistently, while diapering or changing clothes, it wouldn't be surprising if tummy and toes are some of that child's first words. Um, it's activities like this that happen frequently and the strategies are used consistently that help children make those connections, right? They're, they're um, hearing this over and over again. They're learning those words. Um, and then, you know, they're keeping them engaged too, which is always nice to have a baby that's engaged when you're trying to change their diaper. Uh, the next strategy um, and among the eight strategies is imitate and expand. Um, I want to note, I want to note here, sometimes I think we should call it imitate or expand because to do the strategy, it, you can imitate or expand. You're not doing them at the same time, um, you know, in the same utterance. So imitating is repeating a child's vocalization or words and expanding is adding something new. Um, so, you know, if, my I'm driving in the car and my child um, sees a cow and uh, says moo as he sees it then you know I will say moo that's right that's a cow a cow says moo so I have imitated his vocalization or word whatever you want to call moo um, and then I've also expanded upon that by saying that you know that a cow says moo um, and I think these are it's pretty self-explanatory. I mean, I'll show you an example, but um, this can, you know, be used again with, with all ages, you know, you don't need to have a child that's saying like words um, or sounds that are intelligible sounds that you know what they are. You can be use this with infants to encourage vocalization and babbling. Um, and then you've, you know, can 
grow with the, with the child as you know you move from babbling to um, repeating other things that they're saying as they move on from vocalizations to words. In this example, we'll see a parent um, who is with a child that has a hearing impairment. Um, and so um, the child is talking and then you also see the adult who is signing and talking. Can you just... Okay, so um, so you see her, she, you know, imitated, um, imi she imitated Annex Band because he said uh, Lello and, um, and then she said, you know, Yellow Robot. Um, and I think this is another uh, good example of how, you know, these strategies can all be used together. Um, she's following his lead, right? Like he's interested in this Yellow Robot and then she's, um, you know, engaging with him that way by imitating and expanding on what he's talking about. Um, you also notice like how she pauses. So I think that's important too with these strategies. Sometimes, you know, it's easy to get into where you're like, what is this? What is this? Or, you know, whatever strategy you're trying to, to work on, you want to give the child a chance to, you know, you want this to be a natural interaction. You think of like, you're looking, you're working on communication. You want to like, you're modeling a conversation, right. And in a conversation, there's a back and forth. And so this mom, I thought had really great, like pacing of um, where she was, you know, waiting to see what, how he responded and then go on from there. Um, and so I think also, you know, with imitating and expanding, um, it pro it, this, in this instance, this tr kiddo, it's prompting him to say a more complex version of his initial utterance. So he initially said Lolo, and then now he's learning, you know, yellow robot. Can you do yellow robot? Thank you. Um, so the next strategy that I'm going to talk about is asking open-ended questions. So, you know, open-ended questions, the who, what, why, when, and where. Um, they encourage children to answer in multiple ways. So um, they provide an opportunity for the child to do more than simply nod their head and, you know, say yes or no. Um, like other strategies, the open-ended questions are more likely to promote communication when they're, they're related to the child's interests or activities. Um, so, you know, coming back to that base of follow the child's lead, like, look at like what they're interested in, what, what they're doing and ask questions about that. Um, you know, if a, excuse me, if a child is, you know, I keep on coming back to the barn example, but if the child is playing with the barn and the caregiver is like asking about the book, um, you know, you're, that's not really a great opportunity where you're trying to promote the child's communication because you've interrupted the child's interest. You may not get buy-in from a child. The child, child might be like, buzz off. I want to play with my bone, barn, <laughs> not the book. Um, so I think that, you know, when you use these strategies, you want to keep that in mind that you want to, um, you know, use them when you're um, also focusing on what the child is, is already interested in. One key element of open-ended questions um, is that you're making sure that there's a pause after the question so that the child has time to, you know, understand the question and formulate their response. Um, if the, you can use open-ended questions when children are too young to answer, um, you're still, you know, asking questions like building, exposing them to vocabulary, building the vocabulary, you would just fill in the answer um, for them, um, you know, like holding up a... Um, a toy and saying, what is this? It's a, you know, um, it's not necessary. Like if you know that the child knows it. So um, for instance, you know, if you have a car and you're trying to get a child to say car, um, my son went through this where I knew that he knew that I, he, he went through a stubborn phase where, you know, it was like, I'm not going to answer your questions. It's, it's on my terms. Um, so I, he, 
he used the word, like I knew he used it. And, um, you know, if I'm asking an open a question, he's not going to say it. So you want this to be a positive interaction. You want it to be fun. You want buy-in from the child when they're engaged and fun and, and having a good time they're learning. And so you don't want to ask open-ended questions and have it turn into like this thing where the, you're, you know, um, grilling the child, like, what is this? What is this? And, and if they don't answer, keep on asking, like, try the strategy, you know, what is this? And then if they don't answer, say it's a car and then, you know, move on. You don't want it to turn into something that's a, a negative interaction. Um, in this example, the teacher in a classroom, the kiddos are um, having a meal of breakfast and um, you'll hear open-ended questions in this clip. You'll also hear other strategies that she's using. See if you can quiz yourself and see what else she's using. Amy's eating her toes. Yeah. Uh, no, but for lunch, we have pineapple. Yeah, here, what else do we have? What do we have? Toast. Mm -hmm. Pineapples are so sweet. Yummy. Okay, so I think I, um, in the beginning, she's using commenting and labeling, right? She's saying, um, I think she said so-and-so's eating something. Um, and then she used open-ended questions like asking, you know, what is this? Um, she talks about the toast. The child can't quite say toast. So she simply responds by saying the full word and then continues to talk about what they're eating. She's labeling the food, talking about it being yummy and sweet. Um, she's, you know, following their lead. It's, it's this activity that they're all engaged in. Um, she's, you know, commenting and labeling about it. Uh, about, um, you know, the things that they're experiencing, um, the food is yummy. And then she's asking open-ended questions. The next strategy I'd like to talk about is fill in the blank. And this is planning a delay during a predictable spoken routine. Um, so children can fill in the blank. So in the slide here, it says twinkle, twinkle, little star. Um, in our house, I realized we did not sing this song. And so if I did twinkle, twinkle a little with my son, he would stare at me. What do you want, mama? Um, the important part of fill in the blank is that it's during a predictable routine or, you know, a, a phrase, a song, a book um, that the, the child knows, right? Um, they I sorry, I should say, we also talk about this as time delay. So you're, you know, you're putting a delay in there for the child to fill in the blank. Um, but the fact that it's predictable and that the, um, it's something the child is familiar with is, is key, right? This isn't, you're not trying to quiz or test a child to see if they can say star. This is fun. This is something that like they really should enjoy. And, and again, you're trying to get them engaged and excited um, so that you can work on language. So in our house, brown bear is like the big hit right now. And, um, and so what we do like the, the book and it's kind of like a, um, like a chant almost like we'll be like brown bear, brown bear. What do you see? I see a, and then we turn the page and then wait for my son to, you know, say red bird. Um, if he doesn't say red bird, then, you know, I say red bird and then we move on. Um, you know, if he does say red bird, then it's like, then I'm, you know, um, I, I imitate and expand. I'll, I'll say red or I'll praise him. I'll like red bird. That's right. That is a red bird. Um, you know, so that is a really, um, fun routine for him right now. Um, it's something that he knows really well and he gets really excited and he just has like this, like sense of accomplishment, you know, when he's like, I know what this is and I can say it. Um, and and, you know, we're working on a different element of language. Like, you know, he could point to the red bird, um, but for him to say red bird or to say some of the other, um, you know, animals um, or teacher or children, like in that book, um, those are the things that he's working on. Um, and so this video that I'm going to show you is one of my favorites. Um, the, this two little girls, the teacher's off camera, but she's asking the girls if they want to go, um, she's reading, we're going on a bear hunt with them and she's going to use this, you know, something, 
um, something they're familiar with to, to use a fill in the blank. Do you want to do bear hunt? Yeah. Okay, you're going to sing it with me? Okay, ready? It's dark in here. Is anyone around? I see two. And a bubba big furry. Let's take a papa. I love the little girl. She's like, run, it's a bear. We have to get out of here. Um, this is clearly a story that they have enjoyed many times, right? And they're able to fill in the blank. Um, and it's just, it's a fun activity. They're they're engaged. Um, they're It's a great way to facilitate their language, right? Um, and so I think, again, keeping it fun. This is not about quizzing the, the kiddos about whether they know what the words to that book are. It's about giving them opportunity to, to use those words. You. I have two more strategies to talk about. Um, the next strategy is positive attention. Um, I think we also refer to this as um, providing positive attention and praise. Um, so providing positive attention and praise when children attempt to communicate encourages future communication and talk, right? So it's a natural reinforcer or reward for um, for attempting to communicate. Positive attention is simply attending to and engaging um, with children in positive ways when they're using language. And praise is, you know, obviously more um, about like acknowledging their efforts, um, you know, good job and, and so on. Um, as children develop communication skills, they begin to understand that their attempts to communicate are effective um, and encouraged. So for instance, you know, they're at the dinner table when I point, I learn as a, as a kiddo, when I point to this and ask for it, I'm given it as compared to when I just like grab it or cry or spill it. So their um, attempts at communication are rewarded. So they start making those connections, right? When adults can provide more of that positive attention to them and help make those associations between communicating and the outcome that they enjoy, they're much likely to, you know, communicate in the future. So this is video. This video example is um, probably familiar to many of you. It went around like on social media for, um, I don't know how many years ago, but it, it was going around a lot. Um, it's a wonderful example of providing positive attention for child communication and what's involved in engaging in a conversation. So this baby, um, he doesn't have, he's not using words yet, um, but his dad is a way, you know, is using positive attention and interaction to, you know, he's showing him how to have a conversation, even, you know, without him using words. Did you understand it though? Yeah. No. Okay. All right. <laughs> oh, no, not, not this one. This is, this is the grand finale of it. Okay, the last one? Yeah, that's the last one. That's what I was wondering. I don't know what they're going to do next season because they did some stuff this time. Exactly what I was thinking. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, don't bring that in. You know what I'm saying? Don't do the same stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I was thinking that, yeah. Yeah. Like, go somewhere else with that, but don't bring it here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what I said. And then he was like, ah, 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 you know what I'm saying? And I was like, what in the world? But don't do that here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Really? I thought the same thing. <laughs> we think a lot alike, huh? So you can see that the father's positive attention sustains the child's interest and it promotes a lot of great communication here, right? The child's like, Tons of vocalization. And again, like I said, he's learning the back and forth of how to have a conversation. The last strategy I'll talk about is providing choices. Um, it gives the opportunity for the child to communicate their preferences. Um, providing choices, you know, for us, the way we define that is that it's a, it's a, it's a, um, it's not asking a question of like, 
What do you want to do? What do you want to play with? That's an open-ended question. Um, providing choice is, do you want a banana or an orange? Um, because specifically with young children, when you're saying things like, what do you want to do? You're not going to get the response that you would get, say, with, you know, maybe like a five or six-year-old. Um, so by using like smaller, you know, uh, a smaller requirement, I guess, like for, for them to, to communicate back to you, do you want this or this? They can use gestures to point, um, you know, make it an approximation to the vocalization or, you know, say the word. Um, so that's what we really um, try to, to encourage folks to use when they're providing choices to use, a, you know, do you want this or this? Um, you know, you can do this or this of books. Um, I really struggle with providing choices for um, in day to day with my two year old. I think it's a it's one of, I think, a really important strategy because we all want control over our environment. I think it's, you know, just like essential to being a human and um, children don't have a, much control over their environment. And so when we can give them control, it's just like great for them. Like you're getting buy-in from them. You're getting engagement from them. Um, and I, I don't know why it's just the one that I forget to use. And then when I use it, I'm just like, why am I not using this more often? Like um, my kiddo like day is made when I let him choose uh, between this t-shirt or, you know, the dinosaur t-shirt or the uh, shark t-shirt, for instance. Um, for the sake of time, I'm going to skip over the video example. Um, it's just, it's, it's really short. And the mom in the example is just asking her daughter, they're at McDonald's and she's asking for, um, do you want the banana or the yogurt? And the daughter chooses yogurt. You want apple or apple, sorry, apple or yogurt. Um, so routines are a key element of PC talk, right? The strategies are most effective when they're used naturally throughout the day in activities that happen on a regular basis in children's lives. These are just like a list of some common like uh, routines and activities that uh, children experience. Um, by using the strategies within the daily routines, we increase opportunities for children to experience the strategies and then increase the opportunities for them to use language and communicate. Um, daily routines are powerful because they're familiar and they're predictable. And, and that, like I said, that kind of like takes something off the kiddo's plate, right? It's like, okay, I know what to expect. Now I can focus on other things like communicating. Um, when we're talking or for you all, if you're thinking about using these strategies, um, I think one thing I want to come back to is um, I've gone over this, like, this is like, you know, really fast and furious in terms of here are these eight strategies. Um, and I'll get to like our resources that I think will help support you in terms of how to implement these. And, and if you have more questions, it's a, we'll explain things in more detail. But if you're feeling overwhelmed by all this, um, I would encourage you to start small. So, you know, we have eight strategies, pick one strategy and then pick one routine and then try to use that, um, you know, throughout the week and see how that goes and then build upon there. So start small. You want to set yourself up, set yourself up for success when you're um, starting this out because it's going to be, you know, new for you too. Um, before I wrap up, I'm just going to go over our, um, where you can get some of our tools. So this is our website, talk.ku.edu. And if you see the menu at the top, there's, it says about, and it says strategy tools. That's where you'll want to go. Um, strategy tools, when you click on that, or, or there's a drop down there, you have access to the PC Talk manual, strategy handouts, activity cards, posters, and self-checks. I'll go into that in a minute. But we provide this intervention, right? At like for, um, like I said, early child care, um, uh, coaches that are working with teachers, home visitors that are working with families, and then, you know, directly to caregivers like um, parents um, and other caregivers. For caregivers, so if you're just trying to teach yourself how to use these strategies, you're not trying to teach someone else how to use them. Um, I, I think the manual is, there's more there than you need. I think that um, just going to the strategy handouts would be like what would be most useful um, for the strategy handouts. There's, it says what the strategy is, it, you know, defines it, tells you why it's important. And then it gives you examples of how to do it. 
It gives you examples of like using it with children who use gestures and sounds, as well as using it with children who use words. Also, there's a link to a video that um, is an in-depth explanation of the strategy. So not the example that I just showed you, but um, the, you know, like it's like a two minute video of following the child's lead and he'll give you various examples and it'll talk and explain. Um, I think also we have a poster, which I don't have a picture. I don't have a slide for, but the poster has, it's just, you can print it out on like, you know, eight and a half by 11. We call it a poster, but it's, it's not big. Um, and it has all the strategies and it has a brief description of the strategy. Um, so that would be something helpful. And then activity cards are something that you can print off from the website that has, you know, um, two to three concrete examples of a strategy and how to use that within a specific routine. Also, there's a self-check that you can print out and that will help you monitor your use of the strategies. Um, the very, it has a place for the, each strategy as well as across what routines you're using it in.